Takuma Yaoi Kusama, who is a Japanese artist and also feminist and minimalist. So, I'm going to talk about who is she. Yaoi Kusama is a Japanese artist who is a precursor of the pop art, minimalist, and feminist art movements. She obsessed with polka dots because of her mental illness that she suffered. I will show her never mind. I didn't prepare her work, but I will look it up after the presentation. And I got five keywords and phrases over here. First one is feminist, which is a person who believes in and supports feminism. And feminism is the belief and aim that women should have the same rights, power, and opportunities as a man. So, feminist is the artist who supports women, women should have the same rights as a man. And the next word is minimalist. Minimalist is an artist who uses a style in which a small number of very simple things are used to create a particular effect. Yeah, like some might use polka dots as her like shape to create a lot of artworks, which shows that she's a minimalist as an example. And then hallucination is the next word, which is an experience of seeing something that is not really there, but it's her imagination. Also she suffered from mental illness that she about hallucinations. And from hallucinations, she saw polka dots, so she got inspired from that, and she created lots of artwork. And pop art is a style of modern art that she influenced and also contributed. So she got influenced from pop art, but also she also contributed to pop art movement. And then the last word is polka dots which is a shape that Yaoi Kusama uses most in her work and obsessed with polka dots. My thesis statement is Yaoi Kusama's work get influenced by her birthplace in Japan and mental illness and her identity as a woman. A outline on my paper is in my bag. <laughs> I will show it after the presentation. And then the next one is two challenges and overcome that I faced during the research paper was it was hard for me to make a lot of number of academic journals and non-academic articles that I tried. So I used like two academic art you know, journals and two actually three academic, non-academic articles. And I overcame with this challenge by reading through some part of articles to figure out why this academic journals or not. And the second challenge that I faced was it was hard to find precise or exact information about the artist due to lots of information. And I overcame with this challenge by researching and reading many articles and journals. And last one question. So how do we find proper historical information when we write research paper? It was my question during research paper. And how do we cite the website properly? I added that question because I already know. I just want to know more about it. Yeah. I think that's it. Who has an answer for that? So the first question, maybe we can help answer that. How do we find proper historical information when we write a research paper? One solution is to find information from more than one source. So making sure you can verify it by finding historical information in more than one reputable source. Okay. 
Often it's better to find something that's not online, not necessarily, but trying to confirm that information by using multiple verifiable sources, so finding it in more than one place. And also, Button, a bibliography button where you just press it and it automatically appears a window where, which asks you like the author, the web, not like the website, if it's like an article or you can just fill that information and you put OK and it totally gives you like that site okay. for that. Also go to easybib.com. Um, yeah, and there are other websites to right. do yep. that thing. But it work, it's easier. Okay, can we see your outline? Let's see your outline. Um, and maybe also, before you sit down, show us one example of our work. Maybe you can explain a little bit. So we, we saw this idea of polka dots. So let's look at one example. You've probably seen some of our work, but let's look at an example together. The, the creation of polka dots was pairs? No. No. The design of it. So as you see from here, a lot of polka dots. This one is fireflies in water, I think. Can you enlarge one of them? Let's see a little bit bigger. Yeah. There you go. This one's like created with lights. Mm -hmm. All kind of different lights. Is so there more like installations? Yeah, and also yeah. like painting. Fashion as well. Yeah. Store. She did a collaboration with Louis oh, Vuitton. Yeah. So lots of fashion collaborations. Oh, with the mock tape clips. This one is yeah. another one. So let's, let's uh, tell us a little bit about your outline. So if you turn on the lights, the last part we'd like to hear about is your outline. Questions? Oh. So I think this is very interesting aspect of an artist, this idea of mental illness and the connection to becoming an artist. I think it's a very cliché theme in a lot of ways, but it can be very, very interesting. A lot of artists and creative people have some kind of connection to, to a great imagination, but at the same time some great emotional pain or psychological pain related to some kind of mental illness. So I think this will be a very interesting aspect of that to, to explore in a little bit more detail. So maybe something you have learned a little bit about before, and hopefully for all of you, this research paper is a chance to, to learn a little bit more information, go a little bit deeper in a topic that you are a little bit familiar with. <laughs>